But you get the idea. We've got to do this. So I had this gal, and I went, okay, here's what we need to do. I want you to go into a courtroom in your mind. And this is when I first started this. And so I started, because this judgment, and the word came out that it was a judgment. She had judged him as wrong. And I said, you need to go into a courtroom. Okay, and this whole thing that was developed, was developed, started there. And then we, and I mean we, Bruce and I, and several, but mostly been Bruce and I working on this one, because this is <laughs> kind of our thing. We've been working on this thing. And it has been exciting because God has really jumped up and done some wild things. And right in the middle of all this stuff, we're learning stuff. And as soon as the session is over, I'm on the phone going, Hey, Bruce! <laughs> a lot of my conversations start with, Hey, Bruce, I, you should see what God did in this session. And he's calling him today. And we did this and this. And we have these wonderful times of finding out how God works in these areas. So let me show you how the courtroom works. Have a person go into a courtroom in their mind. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to talk about um, what people call um, cognitive uh, manipulation or cognitive, trying to um, preconceive, get their visions going. This is not that. This is not where I'm trying to get you to go through a, a, a picture. What do they call that, Bruce? Remember what they used to call it? Guided imagery. This isn't guided imagery, okay? Now, people say, but you're having them go into a courtroom. Okay. This is a real courtroom. This isn't just guided imagery. They have already been in this courtroom. They have already judged from this courtroom, but you're bringing it to a focus so they can see it. Have them go into a courtroom in their mind. Now, th most people have been in a courtroom of some sort. If not, they've watched Law & Order, okay? Or they've watched something where they've seen a courtroom. I, I know, I've never known anybody who didn't know what a courtroom looked like. They even go down to the little wall that separates the gallery from the, for the people, and there's a two tables for the defender and the prosecuting, and they have the place there for the, for the jury. I mean, every, everybody sees it. They know what the bench is. The bench is where the judge sits, and the judge sits up over everybody. Okay? So I said, okay, go into a courtroom in your mind. I says, let me know when you see it. And they go, okay, I got it. They can give you details of the paneling, of what the floor is, what the color of everything is. I mean, it's, it's amazing how much detail they can give you. Go into a courtroom in your mind. Okay. Have them get behind the bench as judge. I want you to get up, get up as the judge. Go behind the bench and sit up there in judgment as the judge. Well, some people say, I, I can't do that. I can't be the judge. Well, <laughs> they already have been here or they wouldn't be having the judgments. Okay. And I, I tell them that there's, some people just get really religious. Oh, I can't do that. I'm not the judge. Jesus is the judge. Oh, knock it off. <laughs> you know, get rid of the religion. No, you've been there. Or you wouldn't have this judgment against them, so you're there. Get up there as the judge. Okay? And they need to see the seriousness of this. Um, I had a guy that, man, he just had so many judgment against people, and I started to walk him through this. Hey, and he's just fighting me tooth and nail. And I says, come on, I need you to get up behind. He says, okay, I see the courtroom. Okay, I'm up there as the judge. I says, we're done. If you're not going to take this seriously, then we're not, we're not going to do it. And so I kicked him out. Pretty much, I just, I just said, we're done. Sorry, when you decide that you really want freedom, you let me know. Because I'm not going to sit here and let you manipulate the system. This is a reality. This is our techniques. This is a reality. And I need you to be here. And he didn't, so we said we're done. I prayed for him. He never came back. Folks, I'm not going to play games with people. Yeah. You can sit there all day and play these games. I'm not going to do that. I've learned how to not do that. Here they are as the judge in the bench. Have them call the offender to the bench. Now, you know who this is. They're sitting there going, and this lady, I says, would you call the rapist to stand in front of your bench? And this is the, the, the extreme. This is the heavy one, okay? You know who the number one person people is, people call to the bench? The number one person that people have to forgive is their fathers. The number one, without any, any close second. Fathers are up there, boom. Being a father, that bothers me. Because I understand with my own kids, 
that I've tried my hardest to be the best father I could possibly be, and I still ended up damaging my own kids. Why? Because the father's position is huge. Father's position is, is a massive thing. And it's amazing how much damage a father can do by not doing anything. Pretty heavy. Have them call the offender to the bench. And I, try, I make sure, not always, I don't really make this a hard and fast rule where they have to say their name, but I try to get them to say their name. Okay, use their name. Take this seriously. Use a formal name. You know, okay, Spiky, come on up. You know, none of these. You know, I want a formal name. Okay, and it's kind of interesting when they do that, how serious they get. And they're going to call their father to the bench. And, also, and they'll use middle names and everything it gets, when they finally get serious about it. George, Earl, Eddie, come before the bench. You know, Doo, you know. that was my dad. I just thought I'd use a name that was real. Okay. Refreshing change. Yeah, how cool. Bring them to the bench. Have them come stand in front of the bench. Um, when they come in, and they always come in. By the way, this is, I've never had anybody say they're not coming. Oh, there they come. It's, it's right there. It goes quick. People come in. I always ask this question, so what do they look like? Now, it's not huge. It doesn't really matter, but it does have implications, okay? What do they look like, okay? The rapist looked just like he did the day he raped her. That was understood. People who called in their father, their father died from old age last year. And when they call their dad in, he's 32 years old. Why? That's when they judged him. That's when he damaged them. And they've had this judgment against him that entire time. That time. Now, it's not just that time that they have all these, but that's the time, that's what they see. And they'll just see this. Um, it's kind of fascinating. So I, always, I ask the question just because it, sometimes it really adds to the understanding of what we're doing here. Okay, what do they look like? How old are they? What's happening? And then I ask this question. I want you to look around the courtroom. Is Jesus in the courtroom? Now, it's kind of fun to watch because they're sitting there with their eyes closed mostly, okay? Most of the time. I mean, we're talking 90%, if not more. They have their eyes closed. And they'll all say, look around the courtroom. Is Jesus in the courtroom? And they'll even look up in the room. It's kind of fun to watch because this is real. This is there. It's very interactive. It's just, and they're looking around and they'll say, usually the most common is yes. And I say, where is he? And they'll say, he's in the back of the room. I get that the most. He's in the back of the room. He's standing by the back door. He's just standing or, or he's standing off the side, but he's in the back. He's not involved. He's not part of this. And most, most of the time, he even has his arms folded. He's in the back of the room with his arms folded. This is not his courtroom. Whose courtroom is this? Your courtroom. Jesus is in the back of the room. I say, would you ask him to please come stand next to the defendant? And they'll say, oh, okay, Jesus, would you come stand next to my dad? Lord, would you come stand next to the rapist? And he does every time. Now, sometimes he's not in the room. This gets exciting. <laughs> It gets almost funny sometimes. Uh, I have to be careful how funny this gets to me, but uh, <laughs> like I've told you, I have a hard time holding a professional demeanor sometimes, okay? But uh, I had this one lady. I says, so is Jesus in the courtroom? No, he isn't. And she was snippy. She was snippy. She was just, she had this judgment against this person. She didn't want to let go of it. She was snippy about this whole thing. And... No, Jesus is not in the courtroom. I said, okay, would you ask him to come in? And that's what I do, is if they're not there, I ask them to come in. Jesus has got to be part of this process, so we've got to bring him in. I said, so would you ask Jesus to come into the courtroom? She says, okay, Jesus, would you come into the courtroom? And she goes, ah! like this. <laughs> he blew the back doors off and walked in like this. <laughs> she serious up real quick. And all of a sudden, there's Jesus standing there. And this was serious business. And then just, wow. And I, it's serious business that I'm trying to keep from just losing it. It's hilarious. <laughs> Jesus is here. Hallelujah. You know? <laughs> Yo. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Jesus is in the courtroom. And then have Jesus come and stand next to the fender. Okay? And you have him come, stand up. 
this is what makes it fun, is that he's not coming in and sitting at the defender's table. He's not coming in sitting at the prosecuting table. He's coming in and standing next to the offender. That's it. See, and so it's so out of character. Who is he? What is he in this deal? He's just Jesus. And he's standing here. I, I've thought about this. I said, shouldn't he come and sit at the defender's table? No, that's not what it's about. Jesus is just standing there. What's he doing? He's actually making the judge serious. And he's bringing the whole thing under his authority. And you'll see this in a minute. I need Jesus standing right there. Okay. You're not there. 